So Magnificent Mavens debuted about two weeks ago and the cards have finally had a chance to settle down. Today we're going to be talking about Feral Rares in general and seeing how they're going to do in the long term. Let's get into it. <laughs> So to start things off, we're going to be talking about what is Pharaoh Rare. So Pharaoh Rare is a new rarity that was introduced in King's Court. It had three cards in there, the Egyptian God cards, and then they basically stopped producing them until this set right here with Magnificent Mavens. Pharaoh Rare, if I was to summarize, it would basically be ultra rare with the image having kind of like hieroglyphic text embedded into the hollow foiling. So for fair rare, there is a nuance. There is two types. There's the ultra rare and then there's the secret rare. The ultra rare for Magnificent Maven seems to be exclusively for European release products. And then the secret rare is exclusively for North American release products. For King's Core, however, you can pull both ultra and secret rare in the North American. I think it was just different level of pull rates, but that's basically fair rare. Let's get into the release in Magnificent Mavens. In terms of release, the pull ratio seems to be pretty bad. I spoke with Ruxin earlier and he's opened a ton of this product and he said he pulled six Faro Rares out of nine cases. That brings us to around two Faro Rares every three. That is pretty hard rarity to pull. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous if you ask me, especially for a subcategory of rarity. I mean, I would not consider this the main uh, baby of konami in terms of rarity i would definitely leave that to starlight rares and i think konami knows that too i don't think konami treats feral rares as importantly as starlight rares and that's why they include starlights in the core sets and then they leave this rarity for their secondary sets now just because something is rare does not mean that it actually works well you need a lot of things going for the card and the rarity for it to actually make sense. I think Faro Rare, because of its nature, does not work on every single card. Let me explain what I mean. Things like Secret Rare or Ultimate Rare are basically hollow foil patterns that add extra colors or accentuate certain aspects of the card artwork that makes it pop. With Faro Rare, you have the hollow foil which accentuates the art, but then the actual pharaoh part, not every single card has an Egyptian theme to it. So to me, it doesn't really make sense to have something like Elemental Hero Neos be in pharaoh rare. This is where I kind of feel like it's just a gimmick. It's just a cash grab by Konami. And because of this, I don't think it's as collectible as something like Starlight Rares or Secret Rares. Pharaoh Rare is something like Ghost Rares. It does not work on every single card. I will never be one who accepts Vanillas or Effect Monsters as Ghost Rares. Like, I just don't see why you need the Ghost Rare for that. It worked on the white cards, on the Synchro cards. The whole white card makes it look like it's ghostly. Things like Lightning Storm or Rhoda do not need Feral Rare Rarity. Like it really does not make sense. So because of this, I feel like this is gonna be one of those rarities that is washed by the wayside as time goes on. And proof is in the pudding. I mean, in the beginning, they were hitting almost $500 for the secret Egyptian God cards. Now you can get them for like a hundred bucks. And this is where I have a problem with this type of non-traditional hollow foil, where you're basically adding things that are not fitting every single card. I would really appreciate it if Konami basically chose certain Egyptian themed cards and then put that hollow foil on them. They actually did it really well in King's Court. I thought that they did a great job with the release of Pharaoh Rare. The problem with it is that in the King's Court set, the printing was not as good as the ones that we see today. You can barely see the hollow foil pattern in the King's Court Pharaoh Rares. In these ones, you can see it a lot better. However, the roster that was chosen for this set, almost none of them make sense. So Magnificent Mavens has an 18 card roster that comes in Pharaoh Rare. And in my opinion, only one of them stands out. But we're going to go one by one. I'm going to give you guys my thoughts. So Dark Magician Girl to start. This is the most expensive card in the set right now. In my opinion, I think it's the most overvalued. I don't think that this card looks good in Pharaoh Rare. I don't think it even fits the Pharaoh Rare theme. So to me, I just think that this card will not hold that $300 price tag. However, right now it's pushing Dark Magician Girl from Magician's Force prices like in the Unlimited. So you have to remember that the Unlimited DMG was never reprinted, right? What we had in the past is what we have today. I think that it will go down and I think that it will level off at around the 80 to $100 overall. 
Next up is the LOB art, Blue Eyes White Dragon. This card, in my opinion, makes even less sense than the Dark Magician Girl. First of all, this art is not loved by most people. Most people love the SDK art. To me, I think that this one will also level off at the $80 to $100 mark. I think it's one of the better cards in there, but I just don't see it upholding the price that's commanding right now at around $150. Triple Tactics Talent is the third most expensive card in this set at the moment, and I have no idea what that card is, so I'm not even going to comment on it. Necro Valley. Now this card is very memorable to me. This is the first card I ever pulled. Now this one I'm iffy on. I think that the whole Necro Valley thing makes sense. You know, like the Valley of the Kings, stuff like that. I think it works a little bit. However, it's still not that great. Right now, I think it's around the $135 to $150. I think that it might go down as playability starts to kind of leave the Necro Valley realm. However, this card has been playable since like the very beginning. So I'm not sure how far it might go down because it's a very 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 playable card and it's always in the meta like i don't remember one time where necro valley was completely out of the meta because of this i think that it will hold its value really well but that's because of the playability aspect not because of the collectability aspect reinforcement of the army or rota as most people like to call it I think it falls in the same ballpark as Necro Valley. However, Necro Valley has a lot less printings of Rota. Rota has Collector Rare, Pharaoh Rare, Hobby League Rare. Like it has everything. So I, I, I'm not sure like how much the price can hold because that one is at the $100 mark. It is what it is. I mean, I don't know too much about playable cards, so I, I really don't want to comment too much. Next up is the Red Eyes Black Dragon. This artwork is what people like to call the PCJ one. This is the probably worst art for Red Eyes Black Dragon, in my opinion. It's okay. Um, I don't think that the Pharaoh Rare fits this card as well. Honestly, I think that the best version of this card is the PCJ one. I think the PCJ one looks gorgeous, but right now it's around 100 bucks. I don't know how I feel about that. I definitely wouldn't pick it up because I don't like the artwork and I don't like how the rarity fits the artwork. It makes no sense whatsoever next is elemental hero neos you guys already know how i feel about this this card has no business being in this set dark magician girl you can kind of say you know the pharaoh used this card so it makes sense to get a pharaoh rare elemental hero neos like what is this card doing in this set like it's just a random reprint in my opinion the max rarity for this card is still going to be the secret rare from the tin i know this is way rarer way more expensive but to me the secret rare just fits that card way better blockluster soldier soldier of chaos no comment playable card i don't know what blue cards do <laughs> change of heart this is an okay pick bakura yami bakura come from like you know the pharaoh's time so you know, maybe it makes sense. But again, I, I'm not really a fan. I think that, you know, there's a lot better options there. I would have loved, you know, a Starlight Change of Heart. I think that would do great. A Collector Rare Change of Heart. I think that would do great as well. I think that the way that the glossy foiling on Collector Rare fits the Change of Heart a lot. Fair Rare, not really too big of a fan. Right now, it's around 100 bucks, but I can definitely see it hit that 30 to $40 in the future. Gold Sarcophagus. Now, that is a card that makes sense. Gold Sarcophagus is like literally, if you told me, you know, choose one card that should get Fair Rare, it would be Gold Sarcophagus. I think they did a great job with this card, and I think it's a great pick. I think the highest rarity for this is the SJC Pharaoh Tour one. This would slot right under there, and I think that this is going to be the most sought after copy because it actually fits the card it fits the theme and all of that i think that was a great pick i'll probably pick one up for my collection gravekeeper's trap no idea <laughs> lightning storm no idea mirror force this in my opinion it doesn't work it doesn't fit the theme i don't really like it right now it's at 75 bucks in my opinion i can definitely see this being the 30 to 40 dollar range crystal bond no clue toon kingdom this is kind of cool, but again, it's not really my cup of tea. It's at $56, and I think that it might come down a little bit more to around the $20 to $30. I think this is one of those ones where it might hit that $20, $30, unless it becomes playable again, and then it'll just probably shoot up, which I have no business talking about because I don't know what's going on in the game. The true name and the Millennium Eyes District. I'd never seen Millennium Eyes District in the anime. I feel like it's one of those spinoff from uh, Pegasus cards. Cool card, but in general, I definitely see every single fair rare going down in price because most of them don't fit the theme that they are in now last but not least is the one card that i think is a great release i think it's one of the best cards that they could have chosen for this set and it's the one card that i bought three copies of and that is the seal of orichalcos i think that this was an amazing choice first of all the seal has characters that are all around it so this kind of like hieroglyphic theme it fits number two seal of orichalcos is an absolutely useless card so it's definitely just collector based only. And because of this, 
I think that the Pharaoh Rare kind of fits that collector theme for this card. Number three, this card has no high rarity until today. So when they first released this card, it was in the show in 2004, 2005, and we never got a physical copy until like 2012 with Legendary Collection Yugi's World. That set had that card as a promo. I would have loved to have it as a secret rare in that set. It would have been totally badass. But alas, we got it as a promo, and because of this, it became a worthless card. We have not had a real copy of this card be really collectible until today. I know a lot of people are going to tell me that UDE copy is the most highest rarity. Guys, that's not a real card, okay? <laughs> it doesn't have even the same card shape as a regular card. It's not a real Yu-Gi-Oh card, all right? You guys can dispute it in the comments if you want, but to me, my personal opinion, I don't think that's a real Yu-Gi-Oh card. I don't really want it in my collection, nor will I ever consider it in any type of real Yu-Gi-Oh release. This card is as legitimate as Silver Stamp Flame Wingman, which Newsflash is not legitimate. So because of this, I just cannot put it on this list, nor can I consider it a real card. The Seal of Ori Calicos stays as the highest rarity in Feral Rare, and the Feral Rare looks gorgeous when it blends with the characters that are around the seal itself. So yeah, that's my thoughts on Magnificent Mavens and Feral Rares as a collector. In conclusion, I think that they are a decent rarity. I definitely think they have a gimmicky aspect to them. I don't think that they will do really well in the long term because the original rarities, the original cards, and the really good looking rarities are still too cheap to justify the prices of Pharaoh rares. I think if I was to choose one card from this set, it would definitely be the Seal of Orichalcos. I think it's the best card in this set in terms of overall release aesthetic and just presentation in general. And if I was to choose a close second, it would be the Gold Sarcophagus. However, that one does have a higher rarity in SJC and Pharaoh Tour. So that's pretty much it. If you guys want to support the channel, you can use the links in the description to shop, as well as pick up your own Garden of Binders, which I produce myself. You can always like the video or share it if you want to bring more attention to my channel and help me grow. And as always, comment down below. I read every single one of them. Let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with me about the Seal of Orichalcos being the best card in this set? Or do you think I'm wrong about my Dark Magician Girl hot take? Subscribe if you want to see more. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.